Yo, what's up Studio Rats? Let's take a look at this fairly new plugin from Steinberg called Backbone. What is Backbone? It is mostly like a drum designer plugin because most of its features have to do with designing the perfect drum sound or maybe a crazy drum sound if you want to. Let's just dive right into it. I actually, I did pick a drum sound to start with. I just put it here on the track for reference. And this is from one of the breaks on my uh, break beat pack on my band camp. So I just took the kick from there. So this is just an audio track, but I have a backbone here on the track. And let me, here is this, this is the sample. So let me drag the sample in. So let me solo the backbone track. So I did a MIDI clip too. So. I can play it here. So I'm now playing the MIDI track. So now it's not doing anything yet. One thing here to start with is this, you hit pre-listen and it analyzes the sample. It just did it. And now let's see here. So what this will do, it will split the sample into two parts basically basically it's the lows and the highs they're called the tonal and noise so it hasn't done the actual splitting yet but before that i can set the levels of these two parts so let's solo lows and the highs if you want to, you can set the, um, this, this basically sets the uh, ratio between these two. So if I set it here, let me solo the lows. Now it's like the very lows and maybe I'll set it a little higher. I think the starting point was fairly good, probably here. Because you wanna have like a re like reasonable amount of lows and highs, so you will get to mess with those. So I'll just go ahead and I'll hit apply. So this will decompose the sample. By the way, it makes the most sense to have um, a sound that actually has some lows and highs or mids, because if you have like a very subby kick, that's just like a sub thump, it's not like you're going to get highs applied to that. So, so, I'm, so my starting sound is like this. I wanted to go for that because it has lows and highs. So let's just do that. Apply. And now I now have these two parts. I can solo these lows and highs, and I can start messing with them. So there are a few features, uh, quite a few different actions, but they have been divided into modules. So resynth is it's resynthesizes the sample, which is basically like the most important or like a, maybe like the, like the most exciting thing here. Then you have a pitch envelope. This is a very good for, for example, adding pitch or like a pitch bump, which is fairly essential in creating a bit of like punch to a drum sound. You have filter and amp. You also get effects. But um, without further ado, let's just try out some of these features. Let me solo the highs or the mids. Let me activate resynth. Okay, the starting point is often kind of weird. I do admit that. Oh, by the way, I'm not an expert of this plugin. Like I cannot explain everything. I just, I've been messing with this for a while and I just wanted to do a video of how I can use this so far. So it, this is not a master class or anything. So. Some of this stu stuff is something I don't fully understand or like I cannot explain everything deeply. But let's see, the resynth mode here, this has a big effect on the resulting sound. This, I found this like a, the sine wave mode is closer to the actual source. This is the source, like the original sound. And this mode is closer to noise. So let's just play with these. <clears throat> I find that tweaking the purity knob in this, this noise mode is it, this becomes more like a sine wave. Let's mix this in. So I'm now listening to both the lows and the, um, the highs together. So I'm already massaging this gig a little bit. 
and I did do this. This is the audio sample, so I can all quickly compare. This is the starting point, and this is where I'm now. So I'm already messing with the sound of the kick. So I mean, even this could work. Whoops. This would be like a really bright. An interesting feature here is speed. It's basically like time stretching. Let me make it brighter. Let me solo this again. But what it's also good for is if you wanted to make the drum sound shorter, because sometimes you have sounds that are a little, a little long. So now I would be making it a little snappier and shorter. This is interesting because it, it's literally like a gunshot. This like this is like the, this noisier recent mode, and I'm giving it a bit of stretching. But the, but it's obviously good for like if you, if you want to create like a really explosive. <laughs> literally, it's it is fairly explosive. But if you want to add a bit of character to the sound, I found this is actually quite good. Obviously this is too much, but this is, honestly, this is crazy. Let's compare. That's literally like a gunshot. So then what else do we have? Um, let's check out pitch. Let me just, let me go back to closer to where I was. Okay, so I disabled read synthesis. So pitch is, um, this is where you could add punch. So how would you do that? This is basically a pitch envelope. For example, if you use, if you watch my Ableton Live videos, you've seen this in Simpler, for example. So this is like a visual representation of how the pitch would behave. So it would jump up and come down really fast, which is essential in creating punchy drum sounds. Um, it's not doing anything now, but I can raise the intensity or the effect of this pitch envelope here. So like I said, a lot of the features are very good for designing a drum sound. So technically this plugin is designed for designing your dream, dream drum sound. So let's compare. It's now like super snappy. I could make it this part louder if I wanted to. Oh, it's limiting it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It does make sense because you can crank this real high, so. But um, what else? You have, let's see, you have a filter part where you can also add distortion and I did like this a lot so tube drive hard clip oh that is crazy the beat reduction this will be crazy Some serious fun starts here. Let me actually. Okay, I know I'm destroying it, but like a lot of the stuff in electronic music, the fun is in abusing things. I should filter this later on, like after the. I don't know if I'm making any sense with this result here. Probably not. Let's go for something a little more mellow. Let me play with the lows here. Let me compare 
I'm not really far yet because I'm um, I'm fairly close to where I started. Let's take a look at the lows. I can, what if I could stretch this, like if I wanted to have like a bassier kick, it's very easy to stretch this. Let's stay in recent mode. There's a huge difference here. Like this is more like noise, literally. It's like a filtered noise. Form and shift. It, it makes the... This is like some sound design weirdness. I like it. This is why I lo love the plugin because it, it takes the things out of the obvious zone. Obviously you can use this in a very subtle way if you want to. If Here, if I wanted to take some of the punch away, let's try that because there is this little, ooh. I don't know if I can make it work. Uh, this is completely unrehearsed. Let's try that. There's a, I'm going to the pitch envelope of the lows and you can set the envelope to bipolar mode so it doesn't necessarily just make the pitch jump. What if I make the pitch go down and I... Let me stretch this. This is already like a bass sound. What's great about this is you can actually take the sample out. See, you could just drag it here and here you have it. I could just... This is one of the reasons why I love this. Like I've been doing some bass sounds with this, like take a kick and just get crazy. And you have a, you have a bass. And obviously in Ableton Live, I could take this further, but I like, this is one of the things uh, why I like, like this. Like you can come up with this fairly experimental stuff. And here's also this hold mode that let's try this. Let me hold this. And I think I gotta go here and um, I forgot how to do this. Okay, so what I did, I had to take a little break and remind myself how to do this. Like, like I said earlier, I'm literally just messing, like I'm not a master of this plugin, but I made the amp envelope longer. So I'm getting a longer bass sound and let me go here and um, demonstrate to you this hold feature, which I did activate in recent mode, this is hold. So I first have to set the sample end here let me take this back. Da -da -da, you have bass. So if I understand this correctly, it loops the last cycle here, I guess. Like I said, I should read the manual, but once again, here is a fairly useful bass sound. What if I just Take this out here. This is probably not looped, so it's it's the. Uh... But then again, I could also I could always just record this on a track. So I guess I've gone a little crazy here. It's just nothing like. <laughs> yeah, it's fair. it's fairly far from from the sound that I started with. Once again, more bass. I totally forgot everything that, that I did, so it's not like... But then again, I'm not trying to create something that necessarily makes a whole lot of sense. I'm just more like demonstrating the features. Let me have a go with a snare. Okay, so I want to do this to a snare sound from my SP-12. These drum sounds and uh, an Ableton Live drum rack is available from my Patreon. So if that interests you, head over there and get it. But out of these drum sounds, I want to take the snare 
and this would be fairly useful for a backbone usage so let's do just that okay so now i have the snare sound on backbone i also put the original sample on a track here so i can compare this is a snare sound and once again i'm now on backbone the snare is here let's do the pre-listen lows nice nap there highs let's just go with that so i hit apply and I get these lows and highs once again. So lows, highs. Okay, so let's start messing once again. By the way, one nice feature here is you can actually copy these layers. So if I wanted to make a copy of the high layer, now I have two, whoops. Let me do a clip here real quick. Okay, so now I have I did a clip so I can display it. So I have two identical high layers. So what I could do is pan these both and obviously they don't do anything yet. But if I do like a very, let's do like a small change on one of these. Let's just change the pitch. I'm already getting stereo width now. But if I, uh, if I play it in mono, it will fold to mono kind of weird. I always have this plugin on master that I can flick to mono, so. So always be careful of this. Let me just do something else. Let me restore the pitch. And uh, let's go for recent mode. Let me set the speed of one of the layers to something else. So now, if you're using headphones or your speakers, you can hear that I've now got stereo. And let me fold it to mono. Hey, it works. So it doesn't get like any weird, phasey artifacts when I fold it to mono. So very easy to give it a little bit of stereo with. Just create two layers, pan, do a minor change of one of them. So. So what else, what I want to do, let's add some, I think often this is very useful because some, if you have like a thin snare, I usually end up EQing it or giving it a bit of like a low mid boost. So this is fairly useful. There's also, if you go to resynth mode, let me activate this. Let me, mess with my clip a little bit. Okay, so let me change the, re the recent mode. So you also get this filter here. Let me activate it. So, okay, this is obviously too much. But it's useful here, comparing Maybe it's a, it is a little too much, but then again, it's usually good to have uh, like a fairly fat starting point. Then in the mix, obviously you gotta mix things in context. You're gonna make it a little thinner. So let's try some of the effects. Add a little bit of reverb. For drums, I never go crazy with the reverb. So I will just make something sort of subtle. Whoa, this is a fairly rich starting point. What do you wanna, wanna do? Maybe give it a little bit of pre-delay. Where do I cut the lows? I guess there's no way to cut the lows, I guess. But then again, this could work. Usually mixing, I, I sometimes for, especially for snares and claps, I do like a little, like a very short, a very short, a little like ear candy. It's very little. But like a client of mine said, like there is such thing as a snare that's too dry. So I do agree. So 
One thing I forgot to say earlier is this it relating to pitch. See, you can, for example, if you want to keep lows so that they don't pit, get pitched, you can do that. So if I now play the snare, the low, lows obviously get, get pitched too, and maybe it's something you don't want. So if you go, I'm now looking at the low part. So if I enable key follow, hear it now. So the lows don't get pitched. So it feels a little less like a sample player because you get to keep the lows. Often when you pitch a snare, you easily lose a bit of the fatness. Same goes for kicks. So especially with kicks, when you're using this to reshape your kicks, when you get to keep the lows, when you pitch it, it is fairly useful. So. What else? Is there anything I haven't covered? What what do I want to do to this? Let me try and let me compare. I could probably add a little bit of some tasty distortion here. Let me try a bit crusher. It's probably I don't use bit crusher very often to be honest. Okay, so we're entering the sound design territory once again. <laughs> now you're entering the SB12 territory. So just a sample rate reduction, but let me try distortion just a little bit. What do I have here? Hard clip. Okay, this sounds good in this context. Hard clip is would it's literally like you're technically driving the signal over the designed headroom and things just get clipped. And this is very essential in certain for a certain aggression. So see. I could probably use a little bit of EQ. I obviously, I did show you the filters here, but it's for each part. So I'll, I want everything to go through an EQ. So, okay, this would do. Well, let's compare. Obviously I'm going louder, but if there's, there's some wishes, I wish there was a way to, because I love the, the, really love the pitch control here for the punch. I wish there was a way, and maybe it is there and I just don't know how to do it, but I wish there was a way to apply this to all the parts so that I would click some certain mode and just now everything that I would do here would get applied to all the parts. This would be amazing because if I wanted to add a little pun punch to everything, it would be great if I could do it. So I started here, and this is what I get. So I've added a little bit of width. I didn't do anything crazy. I, I think I added, a, yeah, I did add a little bit of length to the lows, and a little bit of uh, stereo width, a little bit of reverb, a little bit of distortion. One more thing. Oh, by the way, I could once again drag this out. This I love. This is just very useful. One thing, let's try this with a bass. Okay, so I pulled out Serum and this is a simple bass sound that I did. By the way, I'm 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 about to put out some bass sounds for Serum through my Patreon very soon, but let's just do a clip of this and make it uh, audio. So let's freeze it. And um, let's load backbone and put the audio there. So let's see what we can do with this. 
Let me edit the uh, sample start point. Sample any point as well. Okay, so so like I said, this is mostly for drum sounds, but abusing things has always been fun in electronic music. So let's pre-listen and lows. Let's tweak this a little bit. Actually, the other way. I feel there's too much. Okay, this is closer to what I want. Like, I want the subs and... So let's go here and I wanna, I, I just feel like I wanna stretch the highs. It's a nice way to add a bit of tone to your bass. Yeah, that's too noisy. There's also this in harmonicity. I'm not completely sure what it is. Like I said, I haven't read the manual. It's funny, I'm getting actually getting a little sub here as well. Once again, this is um a, a, a bass sound of its own right here. I'm, I'm only listening to the highs and that's it. I could do, if I wanted to do the loop thing once again, I could go and, uh, whoops, go here, hold, and I would have to uh, Gonna set the amp to so now it's once again it, I think it's looping the last cycle here or something like that so once again we're in sound design territory this would need a lot of reverb I'm running this to my reverb boss, so. A little more mangling, I feel I wanna do. Uh, a little messing with the pitch here. Yes, this is because I knew I could make this into a bass sound. And then this is just the lows, like I did mute it. No, this is just the high, sorry. Yeah, I need to make this actually... I need this. Whoops, the wrong track. So, I gotta save this bass sound. There you have it, the bass. <laughs> so um, that's my first look with Backbone. Maybe this is the worst Backbone tutorial ever because I just got kind of creative, so to speak. But um, maybe you got a hunch of what these features do for drum synthesis and drum design. But I also I do like the creative part that it allows. I've never been the, like the best sound designer in the sense that I, I have a sound in my mind and I just set out to do it. But I, I've, I've always done a lot of experimentation and that's why I love these plugins, these types of plugins. So let me know how you feel. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. My uh, messy adventures with Backbone. And like I said, I will be putting out some of the my Serum bass sounds soon through my Patreon and also do a video on how to add some growl and bass, some dirtiness, some dirt into them. Thank you for watching till the next time.